In this video, we're going to take a look at curves. Curves are used throughout Maya for a number of different applications. For instance, we use curves to generate hair or simulated curves. We also use curves to generate surfaces. And we use them as a guide for other nodes or objects. Let's take a look at the different types of curves that Maya has. From our main menu, we can go to Create, and we have CV Curve Tool and the EP Curve Tool. These two are our main curve types, and we use these most often. Essentially, they're identical. And let's first create a CV curve and take a look. So I'll click on that. And I'm going to go down to my recent tool here and double click to bring up the tool settings. Inside of my CV curve tool, you can see I have a couple of different options here. All of these will help me generate a curve, but they will give me a different looking curve. Now, once again, we're going to narrow our focus down and say that linear and cubic are really the only two types of curves that we want to be concerned with for now. A linear curve is not going to have any interpolation in between its points. So as I go out into my perspective and left click, I'm adding a control vertice, and you can see that the resulting curve is very jagged. It simply goes from point A to point B. To complete that curve, I'll just hit Enter. And now I have a completed curve. Let's go back to our tool and go to my CV curve. This time we'll create a cubic curve. And again, I'll left click and draw out a curve. Now this cubic curve is interpolated between its points. Therefore, I get a more rounded look to my curve itself, and it actually has curvature. We complete it the same way. We'll just hit Enter, and now the curve is complete. Now, curves are not renderable, meaning that when I go to render, they're not going to show up. So really, we use these, as we mentioned earlier in our video here, that they're mainly for helpers for other objects, and we can do all sorts of really great stuff with them. Now, our other curve option up here was to create an EP curve. I'm going to click on this and let's generate this and take a look at our options. We have all of the same options here. Again, I'm going to stick with cubic and we'll draw an EP curve over here. Now, notice I'm kind of drawing it very similar to how I drew that first CV curve, this guy here. But notice that the shape is actually very different. Now, of course, I didn't click in the exact same spots, but it's not quite as curved. It's not as rounded. It's a little bit more blocky. Not like our linear curve. It still has a roundness to it, but the position of those points made the shape of the curve a bit more awkward. Let's take a look. Now, I want to look at the components of my curves here, and I'm going to select my CV curve. This is the control vertice curve that I drew originally. And I'm going to right click on it to get to its components. And we're going to go to control vertex. Now a control vertex does not sit exactly on the surface of my curve. With the exception of the end points, those do. Those are actually right there. The points that make up the middle of my curve do not. They kind of float off there in space. We can grab those points and use our move tool and arrange them. Now we can also scale and rotate points, but in order to really see that effect, we need to have multiple points selected. Now, if I go to my EP, notice I have the same options. These two curves are identical, but we drew them using different components. This one was the control vertice. This one was the edit point. They both share the exact same components. So I can go to this one that we used control vertices and choose edit point, and I will get the edit points. Now we can move these edit points just like we did with our control vertice. 
but their movement is a bit more unpredictable. They sit directly on the curve, but notice how much the curve shape changes as I move these, even way back here. Edit points work a little bit more in the construction of the curve itself, whereas the CVs, or control vertices, are a bit more artistic. And they are much easier to manipulate and move around. Notice I'm not getting a lot of movement back here. So for most of our applications, we'll use control vertices. We'll use control vertices to create the curve as well as manipulate the curve or shape it into what it is that we're looking for. The control vertices give us more of a predictable movement over those EPs. And we can just go to this one here and we'll look there. I still have control vertices and I can move those and I can change this so that that shape matches this one a little bit better, as well as my edit points, same exact stuff. Now, the linear curve that's sitting over here has the same exact things, but since it's linear and it has no interpolation between its points, those points sit directly on the surface. And whether you're manipulating the control vertice or the edit point, you're going to get the same result. Nothing back here or in front of it is going to move. It basically terminates at each point so we don't get any interpolation across there. Now we can draw these curves with a couple of different tools. If I go to Create, I have the Pencil Curve tool, and we'll open its options here and see that, very simple, we have Linear or we have Cubic, and that's that three that's sitting there. And with the Pencil Curve tool, I can freehand my curve. So I can just kind of draw this out, and the curve won't actually get completed until I let go of the mouse button. Notice that it was red when I let go. It went to that green color showing me that it's selected. And if I right click and then look at its components, you'll see that Maya tries to figure out the best configuration for how many control vertices or edit points that it needs to have in the curve in order to represent its shape properly. So we get a lot of points here when we do a freehand draw. Most often it's best if we just manually click and create our own curve. And then if we need a bit more of a refined curve, we can use some of our arc tools. And we'll choose the three-point circular arc. And we'll left click three times. We can generate an arc. Now, once I drop those boxes there, I can then middle mouse on one of those blue boxes to create the type of arc that I'm looking for. And even bringing it all the way around here basically gives us a full circle. And when we're done, we can hit enter to complete that tool. And you can go into the channel box here and make modifications to those points in order to change or shape that circular arc. This way too, we get those actual numbers. So if we know some specifics, of the type of arc that we're after. If we're really, really good at creating that math, we can actually enter those values in. 